Hi everybody, Dr. Kat Fleece here from Central New Mexico Community College. Let's use video F of the integumentary system to study the two types of glands that we find in the integumentary system. And those are the sweat glands and the oil glands. The sweat glands are also called the pseudoriferous glands. And there are several kinds, actually. The two most common are the eccrine sweat glands and the apocrine sweat glands. Now, you've learned that term apocrine before to learn about how glands secrete. So, but this name is not based on the mode of secre secretion. So this is kind of a misnomer, and I'll explain this better in just an, a, a moment. So this name is not based on mode of secretion. Now notice that we have a couple more types of sweat glands, but they are very modified sweat glands, believe it or not. Your glands that produce earwax in your ears are called the cerumenous glands, and they are a type of modified sweat gland, and so are our mammary glands. So the second major type of gland are the oil glands, and they are also referred to as the sebaceous glands because they secrete an oily substance better called the sebum. So let's start with the most common sweat gland called the eccrine sweat gland. Notice it's spelled with two C's. And it's a very coily, coily type of gland with, who, which then sends its tube out towards the surface of the skin to create a sweat pore. So the secretory units of the eccrine sweat gland secrete the sweat and then the sweat actually ex exits our body. And so for those reasons, we can also argue that we excrete sweat. So these are the most numerous types of sweat glands that we find in many places of the body, but they're very, very abundant, as you know, on the insides of your hands, the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet, and your forehead. So these places where you really sweat. They're considered merocrine glands, so now we are talking about modes of secretion, so that means that they secrete by means of exocytosis. I hope you remember that. So the sweat secreted by eccrine glands is secreted by exocytosis. Now, what is sweat, really? Well, remember we have different kinds of sweat glands. So the eccrine sweat glands, they produce a sweat that is mostly water, which is pretty much always the case when we're talking about a bodily fluid. But realize that all of this water, and notice it's, it's easily almost all water, is going to reach the surface of the skin. And if our skin is hot, because our body temperature is hot, that water can then evaporate and take with it the heat in the skin. So it's, it's a form of thermoregulating. As you know very well, when we get hot, we start to sweat and that evaporative cooling is going to uh, regulate our body temperature. Now, in mixed in with that water, we find some salts, which is when you uh, sweat a lot during a, a heavy-duty workout, or you've been running outside or working in the yard during the temperatures that we have here in New Mexico in the summer. It's probably wise to do some supplementing with something called Gatorade, um, or other drinks like that, so that you replenish your, your minerals, um, your salts. We find inside of the sweat also things that defend us against pathogens, such as antibodies, something called dermcidin, that, which has proteolytic functions. In other words, it can lyse proteins, proteolytic, let me spell this out for you, and therefore, it can damage pathogens because they're all made up of proteins, of course. In addition, the pH of eccrine sweat is rather low or lower than 7, which again is something that the proteins of pathogens are not going to like. Remember that a low pH is going to uh, possibly denature proteins is going to slow down enzymes, which are proteins as well. Finally, eccrine sweat glands are stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, 
And remember, the sympathetic nervous system is only made up of motor neurons, which tells us that they are going to send signals from the CNS to the effector. And our effector, in this case, is our eccrine sweat gland. So all of these um, neurons that we see here, are, or neuron parts, I should say, they're going to tell the sweat gland it's time to start secreting sweat. So the electrical signal this time is going into the sweat gland from the CNS. And as you know very well, when we're very stressed, which is when our sympathetic nervous system kicks in, we start to sweat more. Here then we see a microscope slide of a typical eccrine sweat gland. So try to visualize a tube all coiled up and we slice through it, kind of like your garden hose that you coil up in the backyard and you slice through it. Bearing in mind though that our glands are going to have secretory units that then lead into tubes and that's what we see right here. So these are the secretory units right here and um, while the darker colored uh, structures with lumens are the actual tubules that are coming off the secretory units. And we see that the epithelial tissue that lines the sweat glands is going to be mostly uh, a simple to stratified cuboidal. Actually here it pretty much looks like a stratified cuboidal epithelial tissue, which is one of those stratified tissues I didn't require you to pay too much attention to when I introduced you to the epithelial tissues, promising you that eventually you would pick up on these two different stratified tissues, that they were stratified cuboidal and columnar, and here you start to see examples of stratified cuboidal. So the second most abundant sweat glands are the so-called apocrine sweat glands, and notice now that I have put apocrine in quotes because more than likely these are also going to be merocrine glands. Maybe some are going to secrete by means of the uh, apocrine method, meaning where the tip of the cells um, pinch off. So there's a bit of, of controversy about exactly how these so-called apocrine sweat glands secrete. So therefore, don't expect that I will be asking you to provide me with the mode of secretion for the epocrine sweat glands. So where do we find these sweat glands? Well, these are mostly located in our axillary region, that is in our armpit region, of course, and also around the anus and the genital uh, areas. These are sweat glands that do not kick until, until puberty, so that tells us that they're going to require hormones uh, to kick in. And we find that often the sweat glands, these apocrine sweat glands, are going to be associated with hair follicles. Now this kind of sweat is slightly different. And what we find is that this is more of an oily type of, of, of fluid, so it's not quite as watery as the sweat produced by the eccrine sweat glands. And it contains various things such as proteins and lipids, even some steroids. Uh, including some pheromones. And remember, pheromones are these chemicals that all animals use to recognize one another for sexual attraction, for sexual arousal, um, things like that. <clears throat> this, is, this sweat is this kind of sweat that becomes rather odorous when it sits around for a while. Um, because that's the time, or when it sits around for a while, bacteria are going to have um, a little party with all of these proteins and all of these nutrients for them basically in this sweat and that's what creates that not so pleasant odor or that so-called uh, emotional sweat. Once again, this is these are glands that are going to be stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, especially the adrenaline, the hormone adrenaline that the sympathetic nervous system um, produces when it becomes activated. Notice that adrenaline, yes, and this is where the term adrenaline rush comes from, which the sympathetic nervous system creates. Notice that the other way of referring to adrenaline is to call it epinephrine. Uh, 
These are one and the same chemicals or hormones. Our oral or sebaceous glands are holocrine glands, so they literally burst. They, the cells of the secretory units literally sacrifice themselves by means of apoptosis. So um, let me remind you of that. And again, they're pretty widely distributed, except that we do not find them in the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet. That's where we find primarily our eccrine sweat glands. These, once again, need hormones, meaning that these oily or these sebaceous glands start to secrete more and more uh, around puberty, which is why our hair tends to get oily, which also tells you that these oil glands are often associated with um, hair follicles. And what is the function for our hair? What is the function of, of, of this sebum? Remember, that's the oily substance for our hair. Well, it's really going to function as a natural conditioner for our hair. It lubricates and softens our hair. And it also functions as a bactericidal. So if you listen to this word bactericidal, you know a wor another word that kind of sounds like this. Think, think of the word homocidal. A person who is homocidal is a person who is, um, is, is willing to kill humans. And so bactericidal is something that kills bacteria. You can also argue that sweat is bactericidal because of the antibodies, the dermcidin, and also because of its lower pH. Oil glands are easy to recognize on the microscope slide. We've looked at this slide before, so here we see our hair follicle. And I'm sorry I can't change the color of my cursor, so hopefully you can see where I'm pointing. And these very cloud-looking like structures, they look like little clouds to me are the oil glands. And of course, since the cells are all filled with that oily substance we call sebum, you can see the, the nuclei though, they almost look like they're empty aside for, from the nuclei. And then here we see a little bit of our acrine sweat gland. These red structures, remember, those are the erector pili that are going to contract to make our hair stand up. And here then we see a, a very zoomed in view of a typical oil gland in the dense irregular connective tissue of our dermis. So this is the end of our discussion of the glands and prior to that we looked at the hair follicle and nails that we find in the integumentary system. In the next video we're going to take a closer look at some more sensory receptors found in the integumentary system, not just the root hair plexus that we have already discussed.